in Florida, you also have an issue with uh, these tegus, which you mentioned earlier, iguanas, and these Nile monitors. Tell me a little bit about them. Iguanas have been here for a, a, quite a long time. They were around probably 70s all the way up through now, maybe even earlier. Populations are quite high, um, but they're more of a nuisance than they are an environmental threat. We don't see them in natural areas. We don't see them out in the Everglades, probably from they get consumed when they're small by predatory animals. The Everglades has, has a pretty wide array of predators. Mm -hmm. The tegus, on the other hand, we have, they're like a furless raccoon. They, uh, where they come from, they, they, they live by human habitation. They get in people's garbage. They compete with their dogs and cats for food, uh, make a general nuisance to themselves. They show up in their yards, and uh, people consider them generally menacing. They're smart. They're diurnal. They, uh, they're active. So they eat everything. They eat every day. They, they eat eggs. So that's a particular problem here because we all have a lot of ground nesting birds and a lot of ground nesting animals, including alligators and crocodiles, that they could go get in those nests and, and consume. And they actually have video of uh, tegu consuming eggs from an alligator nest. So that, that's a potential problem. And some of our turtles and tortoises that are, that are uh, uh, and threatened with, uh, by development and other things, this is just an additional uh, pressure on those animals to survive. And these animals are, are like coyotes in the sense that they, they actually can thrive near an urban, urban area. Oh, yeah. They do quite well in the, in, the, in the urban interface, in the suburban urban interface and suburban wildland interface. They do quite well. They, they actually, there's a, a few um, uh, manufactured home parks and they live under the houses. They come out when they want to eat and they nest right there and in the neighborhood and make a general nuisance of themselves and people find them quite disturbing to have a two or three foot lizard running through their yard. Certainly. They're incredibly fast, so capture is difficult. The good thing is that those animals can be trapped because unlike a python, which may sit in a spot for 45 days or, or two months or so, uh, they have to eat every day. So you can put a trap there and then there's a few, a few bait items that are quite effective at capturing them. Understood. One of the stories that I read uh, back in 2010 when you mentioned that cold snap, and, and at first it had all the hallmarks of an urban legend, but I think this was true, that in Miami these iguanas were falling out of trees because I guess they go into a mild hibernative state when it gets cold yeah. in that cold snap, and then they were falling out of trees? Yeah, they go into a torpor, and um, unfortunately for them, they climb a tree to try and uh, for protection. And trees are terrible for protection from cold because you're more of your body surface area is exposed to the cold air. There's no insulation. The temperature drops there, especially if there's some dew formation. Uh, so they get chilled. They fall out of the trees because they lose their grip. They just get stiff and fall, fall to the ground. It was an amazing story. When I first read it, it I, like I, I thought, is this, is this real? And um, so it was humorous to me, uh, but it's not great for the iguanas, obviously. So ultimately... Florida, apparently, according to the sources that I keep encountering, has the claim to being the place with the most invasive animal species on the planet right now. Oh, probably. Probably where they keep records. There may be a place that doesn't keep records, but maybe not a lot of people go there and bring stuff with them. Uh, so we have a fair number of reptile species, some mammals, uh, fish. There's a, a host of fish that have been introduced into our canal systems. The good thing is, is they're not going to make it too far out of here. Probably with cold weather, that'll kill them as well. And uh, even in our ocean, we have lionfish in the ocean here. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. I guess my final question to you is, because you, you deal with these animals daily, um, is the cat out of the bag? I mean, I, I, don't, I fail to see or it's, I'm skeptical that these animals can be eradicated from these places where they don't belong. I mean, it just seems like they're here to stay. Is that correct? Or Once an animal has been established and has a healthy population, eradication is difficult. And when, you, when I say 3 million acres, those 3 million acres are relatively untrammeled wilderness where we probably use, I'll say, generously 10% of the land area. And uh, if they're in the center of that, removing them from that location is uh, near impossible. Uh, without some other factor being involved, the, the eradication of these animals is going to be difficult or 
I don't like to say impossible because who knows? We may come up with some magic silver bullet. I don't. I, I somehow doubt it. I think what we're going to do is it's now a management issue. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to manage the population, and we're especially where they encounter people. We're especially going to have to keep, and that's what the Python patrols for, and some of these other efforts and removal efforts that go on, is is to manage the population where there's an interface, where there's some interaction with humans. Uh, not so much of the threat, but because that is where we're going to find them. Understood. That's where, where people are and the snakes are, that's where you're going to get them. It's serendipity. If you go out to the Everglades and you drive around uh, or walk around, uh, being in three million acres and in the same place with uh, an animal you're looking for, uh, with a few exceptions, is luck. It's, it's luck. So if you're looking for pythons, they can spread out over a huge land area. And finding an animal that has about a 1% detection rate is lucky.